All right, all right, all right. It's that time again. Early morning crypto talk on a Monday morning. Pick one, Brandon, here from Los Angeles, California. Go ahead and type in the chat box where you're listening in from. The Abdul Wild, the Foose, Tracy Kubish, Shane West, Nicholas Martinson, Kales Vince. Tony Pinkston, Bethany Gibbs, Melinda McAdams, Marty Juarez, from Victoria, Texas, Leah Ware, Latifa, from Delaware, Brad Gibson, Linda from Washington, Mohammed Abdul Rahim. Gina Ray, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Cleavy Stewart. As a disclaimer, I'm not a licensed financial advisor to be discussing financial advice. I read the news, give my opinion, share suggestions, and it's up to you to make an informed, intelligent decision on which direction you want to move into. There's four rules I live by in the crypto space and have success. Rule number one, education is key. Education is everything. Rule number two, never invest money that you cannot afford to lose. Rule number three, always get your return on investment back as fast as possible. And rule number four, where do you see yourself in three months, six months, a year from now? What are you wanting to do to make it happen? Stay focused. Do not get distracted. Now, this is not going to guarantee you success, but it will at least minimize your risk. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the most that we can ask for.
All right, so let me go ahead and get this started. Share screen, please. Another old school beat. I'm telling you, the rest of this month, I'm strictly going old school. <laughs> and old school, I can't believe I'm saying old school because it was just in the 90s. That's not old school. Anyways, you should be able to see my screen and let me... Make sure I got my Bluetooth turned on and set and ready to go. Hope you had a great weekend. On the KGX side, we had a lot of people that made videos this weekend. Good job, good job. Saw so Gina's video and Sean the Voice Robinson, Lashana Robinson. Uh, what's up with the Robinsons, man? Today's my grandmother's birthday, 95 years old. And guess what her name is? Laverta Robinson. <laughs> yes, I'm a Robinson as well on one side of my family. So we've got uh, also Melanie. You guys see Melanie's video? Everybody, I love it. Everybody's showing out. The Shana was showing her, 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 her goals, her brand new car. I love Gina's passion. Sean, the voice is the voice. You had Melanie was singing. <laughs> Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Uh, so let's look at coin market cap. Let me hit the refresh. See what we're looking at here. Age has already been up for a dozen hours or so. Market cap is 111 billion, so it's lost four billion dollars since yesterday. Uh, Bitcoin dominance is at 55.1 percent, which means most of those losses came from the altcoins and not Bitcoin itself. Bitcoin's at 35.27. The market is in the red. Bitcoin, Ripple, Ethereum, and Stellar, top four coins. Tether moved up to number five in terms of market cap. Wow. That meant the others dropped significantly. Bitcoin cash, but EOS was up. An article came out, EOS was like 11% yesterday. Now it's down 2%. Bitcoin SV, Litecoin, Tron, Cardano, Monero. Interesting how Tron overtook Cardano, Monero. IOTA used to be not in the top 10. Porn coin hits the top 10. Ethereum Classic took a big hit, especially on the news that one of their biggest developers dropped out. Good morning, Lashana. I was just talking about you. Lashana Robinson showing off her car. <laughs> Sean the Voice Robinson. Today's my grandmother's birthday, Laverta Robinson. 95 years old. I'm her first grandchild, grandchild as well. My grandma, she had like 11 brothers and sisters. She's the second oldest. She, her mother had her at 15. She was 14 when she was pregnant with my grandmother. And my grandmother was her second child. She was 13 when she had her first. My grandma's older brother passed away a long time ago. Well, my grandma was, uh, how old? She was when my mom, my mom's her first child. My grandma was like 36, I think, when my mom was born because she spent all her time raising her siblings as the oldest girl. So, you I mean, if your mom's only 14 years older than you, you know, she, she helped raise all her siblings before she started to have her own family. So she's our matriarch of our family. She still has all of her brothers has passed, but she still has almost all of her sisters. One sister just passed away a couple of months ago. 
Uh, but we have a huge family. I have a big family. Anyways, let's get back on topic here. Bitcoin, Ripple, Ethereum. What about the best performers over the last 24 hours? DEX, D-E-X, 35%. IOTA, now that's a one to look at. Where are the rest of the top 20 coins in the red? IOTA is 6.5% green. Mithril, Maiden Save, Golem, Dai, Linky, USD coin, Tether. What has Electronium did? Electronium went up by 11%. And I think when that happened, people sold off to make a little bit of profit on that. So yeah, it's down 5% now, but it was up 11% this weekend. Mafus Robinson. <laughs> Everybody I see, I keep seeing Robinsons popping up all over the place. You'll see on my Facebook post, all the Robinsons come up. My aunt, Patricia Robinson. All right, let's see. Yeah, we, 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 were we all related to something? One way or another. So what about the worst? Well, I just think I did just look at the worst performers. Best performer, worst performer, Factum, Tezos, Ravencoin, Maker, Qcoin shares, Revain, anything in significance. Uh, Pundi X at negative 8%. Populous. Ox, Monero, Monero, yeah, Neo. Verge, the other porn coin. And let's look at more closely, a little more details. And I think it's about time. I'm going to log in after this and go ahead and make my sell order so I can continue my trades. Uh, but the market looks like it's on a downward trend. Still going down for the last 24 hours. Came up a bit. Bounced around in here. See, guys, when, when we talk about volatility, this is what we're talking about, bouncing around. You've got the big turns, but then you've got, call these micro, micro changes. This is where the fortune's being made, not in the big long and hold. Yeah, that's, 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 that's your long-term strategy, but the fortunes right now is being made in these little swings. People are making money when the market goes up and goes down. It doesn't matter the price of Bitcoin. Bitcoin could be at $20,000 right now, and the market still be doing this, and people still be making a killing on the day swing trades, sideways trading, up, down, buying the dip, selling the high, rinse and repeat. These people are not holding the coins. They're trading against it. As you'll still see, I bet that bot is still operating. It's been operating for three weeks now. There it is, 50 Bitcoin is, is using to buy and sell. And I think I spotted a second bot at work, or maybe even a third. Look at this one, 25 Bitcoin there, 24 Bitcoin there. Do I see something even on the sell side? I see 10. I don't. That may not be a bot, maybe an individual doing this. Once they buy, then they're going to place a self order and vice versa. But yeah, that 50 Bitcoin bot is in, is in play. And they're dealing with right now the value of $171,000 on both the buy and sell side. So over $300,000 is their Vegas money. And they've made at least $100,000 over the last week and a half, regardless of what the market was doing. I would figure probably making seven to ten percent a day. Think about that for a second. Volatility is that high that it can do that. If it does six, seven, maybe ten trades a day, pulling one and a half or a half percent profit on each trade, that adds up to seven to ten percent a day. On $160,000, 
That's over $10,000 a day. Can you survive off of $10,000 a day? See, that may seem like a lot of money to you, but you need to have money to make money. That's why in the crypto space, using companies like KGX to get your education and then earning while you're learning, not spending all your money, but ma making enough money to set aside so that you can invest with, so that your money can make money for you. That's the ultimate goal. Your money's making money for you. If you've got $300,000 and you know what to do with it, you don't live off your 300,000. You live off what we might call the interest that your 300,000 produces. And Shane is right. One of the main goals is, you know, and this, it should be, I can't give you advice on this, but your main goal with green, if you own a machine, it shouldn't be that greenness is going to save my life. It's going to get me out of debt and buy my house and my car. Your main goal for green should be it's going to give me enough money that I can invest with properly. And then plan my life around the profits that my investment is bringing me. So even though green was an investment, this is how you flip. It took a little bit of money to get your machine. Your machine is going to generate you more money so at least you made your initial investment back you use the profits from what that machine is generating to now invest in bigger bigger things and other projects you're always flipping you're taking a percentage of that and living off of saving and investing rinse and repeat so now you have your money working for you green is going to be most of you guys' first step in that direction Unfortunately, I already know this. Most is not going to do that. Most, especially those that are not plugging in, they're going to sell all their coins as soon as they, you know, they see a little bit of profit, sell it all and keep on keep it moving. And there's no, there's nothing, there's no right or wrong way. It's just you've got to have your own personal strategy and your own personal goal. If you're sticking with me and listening to me all day long, all I'm talking about is flipping. I flipped 30 into six figures. Everything I have up to this point came from $30. I was dead broke, ran out of savings, looking for a job. Hadn't had a job in years. Took $30 of my education and flipped it. Flipped it into KGX. And the, the, the machines that I've purchased. This is a long-term thing for me. All right, let's get to some articles. Companies that accept Bitcoin list updated for 2019. All right, so we're going to go down and rough, roughly look at what companies are accepting Bitcoin. While many Bitcoiners prefer simply to hold their coin, plenty also love to spend it over its history. More and more companies have integrated support for Bitcoin. It's not just for gambling anymore. You can purchase almost anything with it. Here, CCM provides a detailed list of companies which are currently accepting Bitcoin as of December 2018, as well as other methods of spending Bitcoin at locations which don't accept it directly. We notice a lack of such comprehensive lists out there with many of the ones we came across being severely outdated and even referencing businesses that hadn't accepted Bitcoin in more than two years or some that have had been out of business altogether, like Groove Shark for years. You can book flights, buy web domains, pay for computer products, buy household goods, and so much more with Bitcoin and places that use BitPay for crypto transactions, processing generally all support Bitcoin Cash as well. We hope this guide makes it easier for you. So online companies who accept Bitcoin as payment, general merchandise like Overstock.com, Fancy.com. Fancy.com, a feminine focused site that sells household goods and fashionable merchandise, everything from couches to high heels. Computer related, Microsoft. Hold up. 
Wasn't Bill Gates running his mouth with Warren Buffett about the dangers of crypto? And, and that's I think, you know, people forget he said in 2014 that Bitcoin can't be stopped. He said that in 2014. And now the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is billions of dollars invested in the crypto market one way or another. So is Warren Buffett. So, of course, Microsoft <laughs> is, is going to allow crypto payments. Newegg.com, one of the biggest computer parts stores online. So if you want to buy a PlayStation 4, a new gaming computer, a good laptop, you can do it with cryptos. What about web services? Namecheap.com, ExpressVPN, Tutanota, and ProtonMail. ProtonMail, I am very, wait, 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 I haven't heard of. Both Tutanota, Noda, and ProtonMail privacy-focused email servers provide providers accept Bitcoin as payment for their premium tier products. I have not heard of Tutanota. I know all about Proton Mail. Let's take a sidetrack real quick. This may be of value for us in the future. Secure email for everybody. Tutanota is the world's most secure email service and amazingly easy to use. Sign up today and to take control of your inbox. Okay. I will create a Tutanota account. I got a ProtonMail one. Doesn't hurt to have more. So I'm going to save that one for later. Shopify. While you cannot pay your professional fees to Shopify in Bitcoin, any store that uses Shopify can accept Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies with relative ease through the platform. So it's worthwhile to contact such businesses. Pure VPN. You guys know what a VPN is, right? It's how you use to mask your I computer identity. Several other VPNs. Not surprised that they would accept cryptos. Travel services. Cheapair.com, one of the oldest companies on the web to accept Bitcoin. Bitcoin.travel. Been around for quite a while as well, and they primarily act as a gateway to travel sites that will allow you to check out with Bitcoin. What about food? Pizzaforcoins.com <laughs> allows you to order pizza pretty much anywhere. You don't have to strictly use Bitcoin. You can use their integrated shapeshift conversion tool to, to use dozens of other options like Litecoin, Ethereum, or Monero. British website, ordertakeaways.co.uk for restaurants. In European countries, you can buy coffee from Crypto Coffee. Crypto native Pex Peppers sells hot sauces for various cryptocurrencies. You can also wa buy wine from Misconduct Wine Company, so shipping restrictions may apply. So don't see it here. It says Bitcoin is a global currency and the landscape of merchant adoption is ever changing. This being the case, running a website that directs people on where to spend their crypto is a sub-industry all its own. Perhaps the elder service in that space is called Spend a Bit. CCM once interviewed its founder and the site was going strong at time of writing with over 3 million products listed and verified as being able to be purchased with Bitcoin. A newer entrant into this space is called SpendBitcoins.com. I haven't heard of that one. SpendBitcoins.com. What do they do? Let's take a look. Over 100,000 merchants accept Bitcoin. Find almost anything to buy with Bitcoin by searching and browsing our directory. Oh, this is cool. Products, places, buy Bitcoins. I will bookmark at this. Save for a later date. All right, other ways to spend Bitcoin. There are two indirect ways to spend Bitcoin. One is to get a Bitcoin power credit card from somewhere like Zappo, BitPay, or Uquid. There are options coming and going from the market all the time in this department, though these three seem to be standing the test of time and regulation. So yes, get a BitPay card. 
Doing the above, however, requires a good deal of commitment to the company offering the credit card and often has regional and other restrictions resulting from the global lag in Bitcoin acceptance. As a result, a few quality sites are devoted to selling gift cards for Bitcoin. While there are plenty of sites that do not accept Bitcoin directly, almost every site where people shop these days has some form of gift card program. Between eGifter, Gift, Gift Off, and Bit Refill, you can find most major retailers like Walmart and Target, as well as many chain restaurants, including Domino's, Burger King, and Legal Seafood. Bit Refill also offers bill payment services. Speaking of which, Australian users can use Bitcoin to pay bills using living, living room of Satoshi or paid by coins, while U.S. persons can use coin bills or bill pay for coins. In the EU, EU there is Bitbill. Perhaps one of the most impressive ways to use Bitcoin online is to spend it at Amazon through purse.io for a healthy discount up to 33% off regular prices. So if you go through purse.io to shop on Amazon using Bitcoin, you can get 33% off. The way it works is you find something you want on Amazon, put a link on purse.io with the amount of discount you want, and then someone buys it for you and has it sent to your house in exchange for Bitcoin. Uh, heck no. I see what's happening there. That's a way to get you know, the average person to give up their Bitcoins. No thank you, personally. Often the Bitcoin rates are much different on Purse.io than anywhere else. To the Bitcoiner's advantage, Purse users take advantage of Prime, Shipping, and other Amazon perks, and thus they have not yet expanded in to any other retailers. I wouldn't use that one. All right, let's go to the next article. Virtual land auction goes live. How the crypto crash affects miners. And it's written by Kay Sedgwick, who I do not like. And I already don't like the topic or the way he did this uh, intro. The crypto crash, really? It's a market correction, not a crypto crash. But I digress. Let's see what he's got to say. From mining virtual currencies to purchasing virtual land, Monday's episode of The Daily spans very different regions of the crypto sphere. We begin with an examination of how the latest Bitcoin crash has affected miners, and then follow up with a look at the second Decentraland virtual land auction, which commences at 10 a.m. Eastern today, so it's already passed. Miners struggle to keep the lights on in Bitcoin's darkest hour. It's the darkest hour? Really? It isn't easy being a Bitcoin miner. What with sunk costs, rapidly devaluing hardware, market volatility, and the stress of competing against every other entrepreneur in the world with the same idea. When the going's good, the rewards for mining cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin can be handsome. But when it's bad, the only certainty is a huge electricity bill at the end of the month. Let me stop right there. The article I read yesterday talked about that miners, if they're doing it right, they're looking long term. They know they may go several months where they're not making a profit. They're paying that high electricity bill because they know there might be a year long of profit. So they don't shut down. Remember that article? So what's Kai Segwit talking about here? In his latest report, BitMEX Research has examined the effect that plummeting crypto prices have had on miners. It charts the two recent downward difficulty adjustments and in mid-December or November and early December before observing that BTC mining industry's revenue has fallen from around 13 million per day at the start of November to around 6 million per day at the start of December. Winter has come. The drop in mining revenue outstripped the drop in the price of BTC during this period. The report notes that there has been considerable speculation around the causes of the price crash, with some saying miners sold Bitcoin in order to finance a costly hash warrant Bitcoin cash. That is what happened. Craig Wright admitted to it. The cryptocurrency intelligence monitoring platform Boltzmann flagged to us that their platform had detected unusually large miners selling a Bitcoin on November 12th. 
a few days before the Bitcoin cash split. Yes, that's what happened. The report concludes with an observation that others within the crypto community have also made in recent weeks to the effect that Bitcoin mining will remain cost effective for sufficient miners to secure the network for the foreseeable future. This is likely to be a very tough time for the mining industry, which is why I'm glad that green has not been released yet. I expanded on that last night. However, for miners with lower costs, our basic analysis indicates that the situation may be better than people expect. If the miners acquire their equipment from Bitmain at below cost prices, they could still be in the green, even when including depreciation and other administrative expenses. Over 900,000 Decentraland parcels go up for auction. I'm not too familiar with this. Let's see what this is talking about. The second Decentraland auction commenced at 10 a.m. Eastern today, following on from the initial auction that took place in the virtual city last year. Virtual city, think of the movie Ready Player One. This stuff is real. All of the remaining 9,331 parcels of land currently marked as black squares on the map will be made available via a Dutch auction in which prices begin at 200,000 mana, which is $12,000. Look at this. So you see this little map here? This is virtual currency that has real world value to it. Each square they're, they're, they're auctioning off at starting at $12,000 for this virtual currency. During the past week, Decentraland has announced a number of partnerships and integrations enabling bidders to purchase land using not only MANA, but also Zill, all these other coins, when I recognize as BNB, Binance. There has been significant interest in the project as the auction date has neared, offsetting some of the gloom that pervaded the market at, a, at large amidst falling cryptocurrency prices. Bloggers have published guides advising interested parties on where the pick of the unclaimed lands lie on the map and how to go about obtaining them. Despite Decentraland's virtual world yet to have launched, interest in trading the parcels represented as ERC-721 non-fungible tokens has been keen with land fetching as much as $175,000 a square. Okay, I am not at all familiar with Decentraland and what their project is and what they're doing. And I do not see a link to go to their, I mean, I'll, I'll have to do some, some further research on this. Decentraland, look at this, what is this about? Land auctions, okay. What is the platform? Designing and building blockchain games, building an underwater landscape, so these are articles. Yeah, I don't want the articles. Show me the marketplace. Decentraland auction. You guys heard of this? Or anybody real familiar? Ideal location in Genesis City. Genesis City. Yeah, something's going on here I, I'm not familiar with. Decentraland. All right, I uh, will do my own research on that later because I'm very curious about that. Anyways, let's go on to the last article. Facebook reveals ultimate goal for crypto and blockchain technology. Good afternoon, Anissa. Post this. Facebook is shedding new light on the social media giant's cryptocurrency and blockchain strategy. Back in May, Facebook announced a big company shakeup involving the creation of a new division dedicated to looking at how the company can leverage blockchain technology. Now, a series of job listings reveal new details on exactly what Facebook plans to do. The company has five blockchain-related job listings as of December 10th. 
The listings include a data scientist, data engineer, two software engineers, and a product marketing lead. The job descri descriptions outline Facebook's ultimate goal of bringing blockchain to the mainstream, including the potential to bring equitable financial services to billions of people. Hmm. Anybody surprised that Facebook is not getting in on this? The blockchain team is a startup within Facebook with a vision to make blockchain technology work at Facebook scale. We're exploring areas of interest across all facets of blockchain technology. Our ultimate goal is to help billions of people with access to things they don't have now. That could be things like equitable financial services, new ways to save, or new ways to share information. Stop right there. I have been saying for over a year, blockchain is gonna disrupt every single major industry. I have also been saying, whether you believe in it or not, you will be part of it. How many users are on Facebook? Billions? Most of them have no clue what blockchain technology is, and some of the ones that do think that it's a scam or Bitcoin or anything's a Ponzi, yet, when they start logging into Facebook, they're going to be using blockchain technology. You don't have a choice. It's coming. The only choice you do have is how you will be participating in it. You do have a choice on that for now. Our global teams are constantly iterating, solving problems, and working together to empower people around the world to build community and connect in meaningful ways. Together, we can help build stronger communities. Our blockchain team is fundamental to that mission, and we are seeking an experienced leader to build and manage a new product marketing team focused in exploring the opportunity the blockchain will. Not if, not maybe, not hopefully, will bring. This is Facebook. So all your cousins and family that laugh at you at Thanksgiving and Christmas because you're into Bitcoin will be involved in this simply because they have a Facebook account and they log on to it every day. Do you think Twitter is not going to do the same thing? Google, Amazon, Apple, the smartphones that is I am most excited about in 2019. You don't think that they are going to be involved in blockchain, which means everybody is going to be involved. Facebook's recent shift to blockchain featured the reassignment of former Coinbase board member David Marcus to the head of the new blockchain team. Marcus was previously the head of Facebook's messaging app Messenger. Kevin Wheel, who was Instagram's VP of products, also joined the new blockchain team. Since then, rumors on exactly what Facebook will do in the realm of blockchain and cryptocurrency abound. One tantalizing report, in particular from Cheddar's Alex Heath, said the company is very serious about potentially launching its own cryptocurrency. And I have a prediction because I see uh, Gina mentioned something about YouTube. YouTube, if they do not adapt, blockchain technology, they're going to go the way of Blockbuster because there's going to be, I already see a bunch of them trying to start up right now, a blockchain version of YouTube where guess what? You own your own content that you're creating. I'm not talking about just copyright here. But you're going to have direct access going to be a blockchain YouTube. Mark my words, and I will invest heavily into it as soon as I get wind of the right one. That's why Facebook's making this move. Zuckerberg doesn't want the Winklevoss twins to all of a sudden <laughs> take over, So that's exactly what they're going to do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for early morning crypto talk. I will be back later today for a late night crypto talk. I will be recording uh, 
today, I'm going to be reading or recording this white paper, a new project in 2019 that I am very interested in because of what they're attempting to do called meter.io. Their stuff really doesn't even launch until June of next year, but it coincides with what we're doing with green. And what meter.io is trying to do is create a stable coin that is not pegged to fiat currency, but a stable coin pegged to what they call is something that is real value, like electricity. That's right, Nicholas, the meter white paper. I'm going to record myself reading this, put it up on YouTube. All right, that is it, everybody. We may get some information update on green today. If we do in time, we'll have a special call tonight. If not, then it'll be later on. So just give you a heads up. We have about 10 business days left before Christmas. This is not when you want to take your foot off the gas. This is when you want to put your head down and go to work. Make that Christmas money. And you do that just by selling our education technology. That's it. $300 for our KGX platform. I would be like, you know what? I'm not into this month without having 50 new sales going on. Everybody needs to know this technology and get educated on it. So with that, everybody have a great day. I will see you later on. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.